Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today the church does celebrate, again liturgically, the third Sunday after Trinity. And I am basing my sermon upon the epistle appointed for today, coming to us from the fifth chapter of the first epistle of St. Peter. And I will read to you that right now. All of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, it is interesting to note again, dear friends, let me, before I begin, certainly I'd be remiss if I did not take this opportunity again today, June 20th, in the year 2021, again is Father's Day. And so I would certainly be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to wish each and every one of the fathers out there a very happy, a very blessed Sunday, or Father's Day, I should say. You see, I know from my own life, from my own experience, again, what a wonderful blessing it has been to me to have a good father. My father who has done so much for me my entire life, even up until today, my father is still with me. My mother, God rest her, she's gone. But I still have my father. And even to this day, my father has always been so wonderful to me. And really, quite frankly, he has always been a, a source of great inspiration, not only in being a father, but being a wonderful human being. It's a sad commentary again that on this day, Father's Day, we have to differentiate between the fathers who are wonderful, who are a blessing, who do what they're supposed to do, as opposed to the fathers who, eh, they don't do anything, they weren't in my child's life, they left their child behind, they, they're nothing. What a sad commentary. But again, to those of you watching this video that do take interest in your child's life, that are there for your, for your children, and for are a source of inspiration, I say thank you and God bless you. Getting back to my sermon. It is interesting to note that in both St. Peter's first epistle that we heard from today, that we're talking about today, and also the epistle of St. James. Again, they both make reference to the same scripture verse. Let me read it to you here. Where St. Peter writes, For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And then he goes on to write, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due 
time. Certainly, again, as St. Peter makes reference to, as I stated, so does St. James. God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Here, both St. Peter and St. James are most certainly themselves both quoting the same scripture verse. Because when we go back in Old Testament, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34, we hear the following. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he gaveth, giveth grace unto the lowly. Friends, we have to always remind ourselves again of the words of St. James and St. Peter again when they emphasize God giveth grace to the lowly. You see, dear friends, we have to again go to God before God can give us anything. It's like the old, have you ever seen in TV shows or old movies or something or another where, where the, the, the one person will say, well, well, why didn't you tell me that? I, I, I've been trying to find that and you never told me. And then the other person says, well, you never asked me. In a certain way, dear friends, that's how it certainly is with God. How many blessings do we not receive because we do not ask for them? We're busy asking for the things of the world. We want the riches of the world and the luxuries of the world. We want the power and the fame of the world that the world has to offer. But we are called, again, to humble ourselves so that we can receive the blessings of God, the blessings of the Almighty that only He can give. If we go back in the Old Testament book of Micah, Micah chapter 6, verse 8, we hear the following. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. We are called, in fact, to walk with God, to walk with God on a daily basis, to spend time with him, and to be in his presence. Again, we spend so much time here in the world rushing from this place to that place, doing this thing and doing that thing. Which again, how often do we walk humbly with God, as Micah reminds us we must do? <coughs> Excuse me. We are called to spend time with God in his loving presence, with our Heavenly Father. Again, here on Father's Day, God is our Heavenly Father, and we are called to spend time with Him. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 states, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear them from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Friends, this right here, this is the verse that each and every one of us, again, needs to, how shall I say, make this our motto to make this the motto for our land again because it is so true these words are so true because again we need to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face 
the reason, again, why God doesn't show his face, quite frankly, is because we weren't looking for it to begin with. We were so busy looking for the things of the world. We were looking for the pleasures of the world. We were looking for the riches of the world. We were looking for what the world has to offer. And so busy looking for what the world has to offer, we never saw God's face. But it was there all the time. It's just that we were not looking for it. So this is again why I say and why I emphasize why these words are so important is because we are called to seek God's face and humble ourselves before God. It's so important, dear friends, again, that we should acknowledge not only what we have done wrong, in other words, acknowledge what has gone wrong and what needs to be fixed, but also acknowledge that it is God himself who is the answer. It is God himself who is the one who will fix our problems. It is God himself who, again, is the answer to our prayers. It's, as I've stated before, but it's so true, again, we have to acknowledge that we are sick and are in need of a doctor before we go and seek the medical attention. So often when we are sick and when we are feeling poorly, we don't seek the doctor's attention. This is how it is with God. We know we're feeling poorly, but we ignore all the symptoms. We know that we're feeling sick, but we don't want anybody's help. Oh, we'll fix it on our own. Oh, we'll take care of it on our own. Or we just don't care about the symptoms, quite frankly, because we're too involved looking here, looking there, trying to get the, all the riches of the world that we can get our hands on. We need to humble ourselves pray, seek God's face, and turn from our wicked ways. This only stands to reason, dear friends. Again, how can we go to God and expect him to help us if we don't even ask for his help? What ungrateful children we would be. How ungrateful would we appear if we get mad at God for turning his back on us, so to speak, but yet we never went to him to ask for the help to begin with. Huh, where were you, God? What, why didn't you help me? I needed you, but you weren't there for me. And yet, were we there for God? Did we ever take a moment to take time out of our busy daily schedules? And yes, we are busy. We're busy with work, and we're busy with home, and we're busy with relaxing, and we're busy chasing all the different things that we want, and we need, and we desire, and we keep ourselves busy doing this, that, and the other. But how often do we did we take time for God. So this day again, dear friends, this day, please, especially on this Father's Day, to take some time out of your busy schedule, to humble yourselves, and go to our Heavenly Father, to spend time with Him, to spend time in His presence, to be by His side, you don't even have to say anything to him, quite frankly. Just go and read scripture and meditate. Be in his presence. I digress, but I remember so finally the times when I was in Philadelphia and I would go to the St. John Newman Shrine, for example, at 5th and Girard, and I would spend afternoons there in front of the Blessed Sacrament just pondering 
and meditating and spending time in God's presence. How I long for those days. How I long for those days. We can do it still. Spend time by going to church. Spend time reading the good book, reading scriptures, and putting yourself in God's presence, humbling yourself. May God bless each and every one of us. May God bless all of us so that we can again humble ourselves and be in his presence. Acknowledge him for being the heavenly father, the father of us all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, God bless each and every one of you, dear friends.